In this video, I'll show you how to dynamically migrate data from SQL Server into HDFS and S3 using Open Studio. Yes, you heard it right. Uh, in Open Studio, I'm going to show you how to dynamically migrate entire uh, SQL Server database into HDFS in one single job. So let's get started. So I'm on SQL Server database now. I got five tables in this entire database: uh, customer orders, product, regions, and stores. For the quick demo, I'll just use uh, these two tables, orders and region. So order table contains all the orders and region table contains the region details. Right, I got one query here. Uh, it will just uh, give me all the top five state with uh, more number of orders. Right, I am using uh, orders table and regions table. I'm doing a inner join based on the region ID and I'm grouping by the state and I'm doing the order by two descending which means uh, I will get all the uh, order count in a descending fashion. So here are the top five state uh, which is now in SQL Server. After this um, in execution, we should be able to run the similar query on Hive and get the same results, right? So let's uh, get started. So in order to do this, uh, since we are using Open Studio, we don't have any luxury to use dynamic schema. So Instead of using that, uh, I have an alternative here, uh, which is uh, by using the metadata table from SQL Server, right? So here are some of the um, you know, metadata tables. For example, uh, information schema dot table tables contain all the table uh, you know, that are present in this particular database. And similarly, I have another uh, metadata table. Um, it's called columns. So this table contains all the table name and then corresponding column names. And also we have the data type as well, right? So using this metadata table, uh, I'm gonna use this table uh, to dynamically generate the SQL and also uh, use it in our talent job. So here is uh, the modified you know, query, uh, which will actually get me all the table names, right? Uh, since I'll be doing all the tables at a time, I am uh, using this dynamic query. It will give me all the table names and the corresponding columns. And wherever we have the data type as int or decimal, uh, I'm just uh, you know doing a cast of a particular column using a varchar. I will show you why uh, we will have to do this uh, because uh, since we are generating one single query, uh, we will have to cast it to varchar so that we can generate just one column um, you know query for our talent job right so yeah so this is the output of the query uh, I'm gonna use this exact same query into talent job and um, we will see so I'm on my uh, talent open studio uh, if you notice on the top left it's an open studio for big data all I'm trying to do here is uh, I'm uh, creating all the connections one uh, with the SQL server HDFS and also to uh, the S3 connection, right? So all the connections are done in uh, pre-job and in the main job, I uh, have a SQL, um, you know, input, DB input uh, that connects to our existing SQL server. And I'll be using the same SQL query here. Uh, you know, it, it gives me all the column names, right? So I'm gonna use the same query uh, in this uh, particular DB input. And what I'm doing is since we have like multiple columns for each of the regions, sorry the tables uh, I'll be uh, adding a T aggregate row right and I'll be uh, using the table name as is for the columns what I'm going to do is I'm going to use list function so you may be very familiar to use an account min max in a sum uh, likewise you have another function called list you can use this list what this will do is uh, it will generate your SQL query, uh, the list of columns in a comma separated fashion, right? So in our um, exercise, uh, in order to do this dynamically, uh, I will have to set some advanced settings here. Um, so we will have to use plus and then single quote, semicolon, single quote, plus. So this will be our, um, you know, delimiter, uh, which uh, you will see it in the query once we run the query. Right. Uh, once we run the job, uh, it'll also print the SQL query. You, you can actually verify the significance of this. Right. So that's all is required. Uh, you make sure you put your table name 
in the group by class and under the operations you will put all the column list okay and if you look at the schema we have table name and the column name coming from the DB input similarly we have table name as a static value and columns the value for the columns will be concatenated value of all the columns right so that's all on uh, t aggregate row and the next thing I'm using is a t java row wherein I am generating uh, the select query right uh, see we have all the columns uh, list you know present in this particular input dot uh, input underscore row columns so I am generating the SQL query uh, and then I'm just printing it so that I can show you uh, when the when we execute this right so I have got my key and a value pair ready so key will be my table name and the value will be the actual SQL query if you look at the schema right what we are getting is a table name and the column name but on uh, the output of the tjava row will have key and value because key and value is required uh, in order to load it to um, tflow edit right right so there's no settings here all it will accept is key value pair so once we have all the table names and the column names in the flow edit rate uh, we will just do a right click and then draw using the row we will uh, click on the iterate and then connect to another db input okay so from here uh, i'll be using uh, the value of the tflow iterate so tflow iterate has got uh, global variables uh, for example if you see just type in tflow and then hit control uh, space you will see this you know value key and a value so the value here is the actual SQL query that we built just um, you know inside our uh, T Java row right so here we built that so the same query uh, I'll be using it in the T DB input right and the schema for this particular thing will be just one single column even though we have multiple columns on the tables uh, I'm just creating one column with a string data type right uh, in in case of um, enterprise version you have a dynamic schema but we don't have any such uh, you know, luxury in the open studio so that's fine we have an alternative here right you know I, I'm just calling it a string and I'm giving good length based on uh, your data you may have to increase this length right so that's all on the DB input and I'm using that one um, you know column uh, as an output I'm just giving my local uh, output path and using the tflow iterate uh, key value key value is our table name right so I want to uh, name a particular um, uh, you know tables and content in a table dot CSV so for that reason I'm using tflow iterators um, you know uh, key values so once we have uh, the um, you know files written into our local all I'm trying to do is I'm using HDFS port and uh, S3 port okay so I'll quickly run through so in HDFS port uh, I'm gonna specify my local uh, folder and the remote uh, HDFS folder so the file for the file uh, mask again I'll be using key of our um, you know tflow iterator you can just type in tflow and then hit control space you will get the option and choose key dot csv because we already have the files in csv format and what i'm doing here is i'm i'm creating a subfolder with the table name and under that i'm putting the slash and then the actual csv right so this is how i will be writing uh, my local file into hdfs under a separate folder so likewise, uh, I'm also using another um, S3 bucket here. I'm using a Amazon uh, S3 connection uh, in the pre-job and uh, this is my bucket name, right? And similarly, I'm specifying the actual tables table name as the folder name. Under that, I'm um, using the same again, the table name dot CSV, right for the input file uh, I'm, I'm hard coded this you may have to uh, you know just work on the context and get it done and um, this is the actual tflow iterates 
your global variable right so that's all uh, make sure you know exactly how to use that key and a value variables from here um, that's it uh, you can uh, just uh, know, run this job to uh, iteratively read all the columns from each of the table for each table it will produce the SQL command right SQL uh, statements will be created here and that statement will be used in a D, uh, DB input and we will put the file onto HDFS and S3 so before we run this job let's go back and check whether we have um, any files here or not see there is no um, folders under this retail DW and likewise so I am in my Amazon S3 console so under that this is the bucket name and uh, under that bucket there are no objects right let me go ahead and uh, run the job you can just I am you know, hit uh, F6 or just uh, click on run once this is done uh, as you can see the connections are all good and it is reading the uh, there are 36 objects sorry uh, there are 36 columns altogether so it will iterate for each of the table it will iterate and um, create one CSV file and likewise it will uh, dump uh, sorry upload or do a put on HDFS and also S3 put so I'm on the run tab here uh, here uh, if you carefully notice uh, it has actually printed the query right so I, uh, let me take one query quickly okay so the output of the query what we are using is this right so it's going to print all the data from all the column with the semicolon separated right in case of uh, dynamic schema this is exactly uh, same uh, this is how it gets generated uh, using the dynamic schema uh, so instead of using that dynamic uh, I am using this particular string in order to concatenate these two column names right now you see uh, when you have an integer you cannot do a concatenation directly so I'll have to use cast and then um, concatenate with the remaining uh, columns so that's the significance of you know using um, the aggregator um, you know the list see here see this is the significance right so this is how uh, you, you dynamically a query will be generated like this this entire query gets executed and uh, dumped in the file so here is my local folder uh, the files are just created right so these are the local file let's go to s3 okay so we have got um, folders created based on the table name so under that you will uh, find the csv file right so this is how uh, it looks on the s3 now let's go to HDFS okay now you see uh, under this retail DW we have all these um, table specific uh, folders are already created so under that you will have uh, yes, so if you want to check um, customers so under that you will see uh, customers.csv file we'll quickly create a uh, hive tables and do the same operation as the sql server right so for that reason um, i have actually written uh, the external table create uh, statements it's exactly same as um, sql server uh, all you do is just add this keywords external keyword and uh, the data type is all int and uh, you will specify the row format as delimited and um, fields terminated by semicolon because we are using that semicolon in our uh, talent job and you will specify the location right so for the orders table i'm using orders uh, folders and um, for the regions table i'm using region right so let me go ahead and uh, run this okay so I'll paste this equals and if you notice uh, this is the connection there are no uh, tables in it I'm going to go ahead and create uh, the external tables 
so this is just one time activity you don't have to uh, worry at all um, you can probably take your uh, sql server query and slightly modify uh, by adding this you know uh, the additional syntax so that your uh, tables will be created right so let's see if uh, it's created yes it is so i have orders table and the region table so similarly you can even create for uh, the remaining uh, set of tables uh, for this demonstration i'll just quickly show you um, the usage right uh, so here is my orders data and this is the regions data right and this is the same exact sql query uh, let me reference it back on sql server we had right so join between orders and region so this is the output on sql server right texas california uh, south carolina and florida and new york right the same set of data already uh, loaded to um, hive uh, it is actually loaded to hdfs on top of that hdfs we have created hive external table and we have uh, run the same query with literally no change um, your uh, sql data warehouse is now um, you know move to hive hdfs and your hive queries are all ready for you know all the uh, analytical you know processing that's all uh, for this video i hope you learn it thank you and happy learning